dollars there. What have you got? You said on the phone you'd give me the name of the man behind the construction company insurance racket. Show me the money first. What's that? Bulldozer. Another challenge for the Green Hornet, his aide Cato, and their rolling arsenal, the Black Beauty. On police records, a wanted criminal, the Green Hornet is really Britt Reed, owner publisher of the Daily Sentinel. His dual identity known only to his secretary and to the district attorney. And now, to protect the rights and lives of decent citizens, rides the Green Hornet. behind the construction company insurance racket. Was it Emmett Crown? You offered to give that night watchman a thousand dollars for the name. Was it Crown? Well? I don't know. 
He was killed before he could tell me. Then I have a proposition for you. I want the name, too. If we work together, we can get it. Working together? You want to expose the Mammoth Insurance Company. I want to eliminate competition. Working together... I wouldn't work with you if... Shouldn't you discuss that with your employer first? I don't have to ask him. I know Britt Reed. I know what he'd say. Do it, Mike. Do it? I'd cooperate with Satan himself to smash Crown and his operation. Satan is one thing, but working with the Green Hornet. Besides, we haven't any proof it is Crown. Can you think of a better way of getting it? It takes a thief to catch a thief. Britt, will you listen to me? It's all settled, Mike. When the Green Hornet contacts you, you tell him you'll meet him any place, any time. Ready to cooperate completely. You realize you're stepping on his principles, don't you? If we can get what we need on Emmett Crown, I'll soak his principles in warm water in the form of a bonus. I think I'll pay Mr. Crown a visit. Why? Crown's too clever to buy Mike as a turncoat. Unless the publisher of the Daily Sentinel sets up the sale. Mr. Crown. Mr. Crown, thanks for seeing me. Well, here it is. It's like I told you on the phone. It's the uh, same shack standing in the same spot since we started this project six months ago. Come on in. So, Mr. Reed. Thanks. You say this uh, night watchman my reporter claims to have met here last night quit his job three weeks ago? Uh, yeah, well, uh, Actually, I, uh, I had to fire him. He got in the habit of bringing his lunch in a bottle, if you know what I mean. Uh, maybe your reporter came up with that story out of a bottle, too. Huh? Well, what did you say his name is? Axford, Mike Axford. That's a good possibility. Mike's been known to take a drink or two. Yeah, well, I guess we all do now, man. There's another problem, though. He asked for and received $1,000 to buy the information. Maybe put it in his pocket. It's been known to happen. Could be. He hasn't been himself lately since he started working on this uh, construction insurance racket story. Have you read about it? Yeah, yeah, I've read a few of them. What do you think? Well, I don't really have much opinion about them one way or the other. But you do have a policy with Mammoth Insurance Company, don't you? I'd rather not talk about it, Mr. Reed. I can't afford any trouble on this job. I got a deadline to meet. If I start having accidents and breakdowns, I don't finish on time, I lose my shirt. Now, why don't you give up? You can't win. Whoever they are, the men behind the Mammoth Insurance Company are too powerful, and they're too dangerous. Well, when I start a fight, I like to finish it. Well, I gotta get back on a job. Well, if you change your mind and decide to give me a few hints, let me know. Well, I, I don't think that's likely. I, I got too much at stake. Good luck. Thanks. one of those accidents?
are we going? To the Mammoth Insurance Company. When we get there, all you have to do is look wise and agree with everything I say. Understand? And he wants another $50,000 premium from the Mid-City Construction Company tomorrow. Let's talk, Mr. Giles. What do you want? My partner, Mike Axford of the Daily Sentinel and I have something to sell. We thought we'd give your employer the first chance to buy it. What are you talking about, my employer? The man that really runs Mammoth Insurance. Well, you're talking to him. Don't waste time, Giles. You're neither smart enough nor tough enough to run a racket like this, and we know it. Don't we? Uh, yeah. You get in touch with your employer. Tell him we want a meeting. What about? If I told you, I wouldn't have to tell him, would I? Call him. Hello? Yeah. Green Hornet. And Mike Axford of the Daily Sentinel. Axford? Yes, they say they have some information that you might be interested in. They want to meet with you. Uh, maybe we didn't get to Wiggins quite soon enough last night, huh? Maybe. And maybe they're just bluffing. No, Axford being there might figure. Fred Reed says he's a lush and he's got money problems. Huh? Wiggins did talk Why? uh... Maybe Axford figured he'd hook up with a Green Hornet and cash in big once and for all. Now listen, ask him if it's okay if we contact Axford to set a time and a place for tomorrow night. Uh, he wants to meet with you tomorrow night. Now he'll be in touch with Axford. We'll let you know where and when. That's fine, but don't get cute. Let's go. said okay and left. The Green Hornet said not to try anything. I'm not gonna try anything. I'm just gonna do it. We don't need the Green Hornet anymore. When this guy Giles calls and tells me where and when to I also meet me... I don't want any more argument, Mike. We started this with the Green Hornet and we finish it with him. Is that clear? I asked you a question, Mike. Is that clear? Yeah! Eddie? I want you, Dick, and Joe to put in some more overtime tonight. I got a job for you. Fred's gone? Mm-hmm. You know where I can reach him? He took some work home with him, Mike. Mike, if you're gonna bug him again about working with the Green Hornet, you'd better forget it. But I tried to... Excuse me. Mr. Reed's office? Yes, just a moment, please. Mike, it's for you. I'll be in the city room. Axford speaking. Axford? This is Clinton Giles. Meet me in front of my office building at 10 o'clock tonight.
Daily Sentinel. Mike Axford, please. Hello? Axford? Yeah. The Green Hornet. Have you heard from Clinton Giles yet? Axford? Uh, no. No, I haven't heard from Giles. Well, I'll check back with you in about an hour. Mike? Are you leaving? Yeah. And if you talk to the boss, give him a message for me. Tell him I don't need the Green Hornet to wrap up the construction racket story. Mike. Those aren't Mr. Reed's orders, Mike. Mr. Reed's orders. Look, Casey, it called me to do business with the Green Hornet. Now I've got a chance to wrap this up without him. Well, what difference does it make, with him or without him? Just this. I've been on this paper a long time. Some people think maybe too long. Now I've got a chance to show those young punks who snicker when I walk through the city room that I'm still the news hawk I was 30 years ago. Mike. You're crossing the Green Hornet. Forget him. He served his purpose. I figure, where should I cut him in on the payoff? You have a real talent for double-crossing people, Axford. First your employer, and now the Green Hornet. I hope you know when to stop. What are we gonna do? With Mike's life in danger, what can we do? Except walk into Crown's trap and hope we can get out. So you're playing the lone hand now, huh? What's this information you want to sell? Well, let's have it. Before, before that bulldozer hit the shack last night, the night watchman told me that you were the one behind the construction company insurance racket. So what? Well, uh, I'm tired of working for Britt Reed for peanuts. So for, say, 10,000 bucks, I'm willing to forget what Wiggins told me. You think I'd go for a shakedown like this? I'd pay you once and you'd bleed me white. No, Take no, care. I wouldn't. No, no, all, all, all I want. Wait, wait, fellas. No, don't. Uh, fellas, I'm trying to tell you. All I'm asking is if you just let me tell you. Hold it. The Green Hornet. Get him! Mike's getting away. Let's hope he makes it. Blaze like armor plate. Activate the Hornet mortar.
Ashford got away. That does it. Not quite. Yours, Axford. found by the police at the Mammoth Insurance Company office will ensure the convictions of Crown Giles and their entire organization. This marks the end of another vicious racket brought to its knees by the Daily Sentinel. Beautiful. But why did you disobey orders? Why did you go chasing off last night by yourself instead of cooperating with the Green Hornet? Who, who, who says I didn't cooperate with him? Mike, I gave him your message about you wrapping up the Mammoth Insurance story all by yourself. Well, that... That was just a little joke. A joke? Yes. You see, everything worked out just like the Green Hornet and I planned it. Oh? Sure. See, I told the Green Hornet that Emmett Crown had probably set some sort of a trap for us. You told the Green Hornet that? Right. So I said, maybe I'd better meet with Crown alone. That way, the Green Hornet could move in later, in case it was a trap and I needed help. I see. That's very smart. I wonder why the Green Hornet didn't think of it. <laughs> Let me tell you something. That crook isn't as smart as some people think he is. Well, it's a good thing you used your head. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> I'll see you later. Okay, Mike. Why, oh, that big phony. Are you going to let him get away with a story like that? Well, what can I do? Why don't you let me tell him? Oh, come on. <laughs> and spoil his fun? Never. Come here. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs>